Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about enzyme inhibition. We'll talk briefly about the mechanisms of different types of inhibitors. Then we're going to look at michaelis menten plots to really get an understanding of what each type of inhibitor does. So let's just do a brief review right here. So we've got an enzyme, it's a protein that catalyzes a chemical reaction. And in order to catalyze the reaction, a substrate, which is shown here in green, this substrate actually is going to have to bind in the active site, and then the enzyme is going to perform some transformations of that substrate. And we don't need to go into all the mechanisms there. But it turns out there's some molecules that you can add to the system that can bind to the enzyme in certain locations and change certain kinetic parameters. And the two kinetic parameters we're really concerned with are Km and Vmax. Okay? Now the three, the three types of inhibitors that we're going to look at here are competitive inhibitors, which are probably the most common. These are the ones that you usually hear about in medicine uncompetitive inhibitors and non-competitive inhibitors. These last two are often confused and I'll, I'll admit that when I was in biochemistry a long time ago these were often very confusing for me and I had to really work on remembering them but hopefully this video effectively differentiates them. Let's start by looking at the competitive inhibitor. Now a competitive inhibitor literally binds in the active site. Okay? It really binds in the same spot as the substrate. You can actually see it binding in the same spot. It has a different chemical structure, but it's effectively just blocking the substrate from getting into the active site. We're going to first look at this plot over here. Now this is of course a michaelis menten curve. On the horizontal axis we have substrate concentration, and on the vertical axis we have the rate of the enzyme. And so the michaelis menten curve is going to have this characteristic hyperbolic shape. So in white here, this is the normal shape of the michaelis menten curve for an unaffected enzyme. So this enzyme does not have an inhibitor. When we add a competitive inhibitor, we get a curve that looks like this in red. Okay? Now you'll notice here that this dotted line right here is really where the Vmax is. And both of these curves really appear to be going to the same point. So when you have a competitive inhibitor, the Vmax of the enzyme, which is its maximum rate that it can catalyze a reaction, is not changed. So what is changed Rather, when you have a competitive inhibitor, the Km is changed, okay? So let's look at what the Km is for the normal unaffected enzyme. Well, the Km is just the substrate concentration at half the Vmax. So we first go to half of the Vmax, so halfway, that's right here. We traverse over horizontally till we hit that curve, the white line, and then as I always say, we drop it like it's hot. We just drop it right vertically down to the x-axis, or in this case, the substrate axis, and this substrate concentration is the Km. It is the substrate concentration required to elicit half of the VO2 max. Now let's do the same thing for the, the curve where we added a competitive inhibitor. So we go to half the Vmax, because again, the Vmax isn't changed, so we're still at the same level on the vertical axis. We go over horizontally to hit the red curve, and then we drop it like it's hot, right down to the substrate axis. And we see now that the substrate concentration required now to elicit half the Vmax is increased. Okay? If you go further up on the substrate axis, that's a higher Km. So it's clear to me that a competitive inhibitor increases the Km of the enzyme. What does that mean? If you have a competitive inhibitor in your system, in order to get to the same rate, you're going to have to add a lot more substrate. Okay, why does that make sense? Well, if you've got a competitive inhibitor that's blocking the active site, you need to add a lot more substrate to effectively block the inhibitor. Okay, because the inhibitor is going to bind to the active site in accordance with its concentration relative to the normal substrate. So if you add a lot of this inhibitor, the enzyme is going to need a lot more substrate in order to catalyze reactions at the same overall rate. The gist of this is that you have a situation now where the Vmax isn't changed, but the Km is increased, meaning that enzyme is going to be, need more substrate to have the same efficiency. Okay? And again, just realize that competitive inhibitors bind in the same active site that the substrate does. So uncompetitive inhibitors and non-competitive inhibitors, uh, they function in a similar way. Um, they both bind outside of the active site, 
Um, it is true that uncompetitive inhibitors tend to bind a little bit closer to the active site, um, but not in the active site. Non-competitive inhibitors tend to bind a little bit further away from the active site, but they're both at a site that is distinct from the active site. Now, an uncompetitive inhibitor, as you can see right here, decreases the Vmax of the enzyme and also decreases the Km of the enzyme. So how does that work? Well, again, we have a michaelis menten plot right here on the white curve is the normal unaffected enzyme with no inhibition. Okay. We add an uncompetitive inhibitor and we get this blue curve. So it appears to plateau much more quickly. So you can clearly see the Vmax is different. Okay. Um, in this case up here with the competitive inhibitor, they're going to the same point, so the Vmax is unchanged. With an uncompetitive inhibitor, the Vmax is clearly decreased. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing. Vmax is decreased. Now if we look at this, uh, let's actually look at the Km. So remember the Km is the substrate concentration required to elicit half the VO2 max. So if we're looking at the white curve, so that's our normal unaffected enzyme, well, we're just going to go to half the VO2 max, that's right here. We're going to go over horizontally to where it hits the curve and then drop it like a top. That's the Km right here for a normal unaffected enzyme. Now for the blue curve, we're going to go to half the VO2 max, but notice that half of VO2 max is different because now we have a lower VO2 max. So here's the VO2 max for the um, inhibited enzyme. We're going to go to half that. Again, we're going to traverse over horizontally and drop down. And now we have a new Km that is lower than the unaffected Km. In other words, what an uncompetitive inhibitor does is it actually lowers the Vmax of the enzyme. It's not able to catalyze this quickly. Now you can see with the uncompetitive inhibitor, uh, the enzyme now has a lower Km. Now, that lowered Km means that the enzyme is going to require actually less substrate to achieve its Vmax. And you might say, well, isn't that a good thing? Well, no, it's not in the grand scheme of things because the Vmax has still been decreased substantially. So even though uh, the enzyme is more efficient at binding the substrate, because of the lower Km, it's more efficient at binding the substrate. Overall, the function of the enzyme is not as efficient because the Vmax is decreased. Okay? The Vmax has a really big impact on the efficiency of the enzymes. Okay, So that is your uncompetitive inhibitor. It drops the VO2 max and actually decreases the Km value. Now, for a non-competitive inhibitor, non-competitive inhibitors actually only drop the VO2 max. They have no effect on Km, and so let's look at those. Again, here we have this curve right here in white. That's our normal, unaffected, uninhibited enzyme. But when we add the non-competitive inhibitor, we get this green curve. So again, notice it's going to a different point than the white curve, so the Vmax is clearly dropped, a decrease in Vmax. Now, for the Km, the Km is really just the, is the substrate concentration at half of the enzyme's Vmax. So again, for the normal unaffected enzyme, we go to half of that, go over to where it hits the curve, and drop down. And that's our Km value for the unaffected enzyme, uninhibited enzyme. Now for the green curve, we're going to go to half the Vmax. That's right here. So we go over to where it hits the green curve, and then drop down. But you can even see when we get to that curve, it's at the same substrate concentration that we saw for the unaffected enzyme. So for both of these cases, they have the same Km, the same. So even though the Vmax is dropped, they're both similarly efficient at binding the substrate. But when we add the non-competitive inhibitor, overall, the efficiency of the enzyme has dramatically decreased because the Vmax is decreased. Anytime we drop the Vmax, we're gonna have a less efficient enzyme, okay? In the case of the competitive inhibitor, we didn't change the Vmax, but we increased the Km. That also decreases the efficiency of that enzyme. Okay, So overall, the goal of these inhibitions by different mechanisms is to decrease the efficiency of the enzyme so it does less turnovers per unit time. Competitive inhibitors have a reduction of efficiency because they've raised the Km of the enzyme. The other two have decreased efficiencies because they lower the Vmax of the enzyme. And even though the uncompetitive inhibitor ha produces a lower Km, so maybe the enzyme can bind the substrate better given that Vmax, 
it still has a lower Vmax, and so therefore it's less efficient, okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good differentiation of these three types of inhibitors, competitive, uncompetitive, and non-competitive. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.